and welcome to World Insight with me, Tian Wei. The program is coming to you live on CGTN. We start with China's diplomacy. Chinese State Councilor and Foreign Minister Wang Yi took questions in a media conference at the ongoing NPC annual meeting. He discussed the China's diplomatic relations with other world powers and global hot button issues. Here's my takeaway. <laughs> China is indispensable. That seems to be what the Chinese Foreign Minister Wang Yi indicated when explaining about the complexity of the Korean Peninsula nuclear issue after the breakdown of the Kim Trump summit. The same fact also applies to many other hot button issues, be it the recent conflict between India and Pakistan, the future of Afghanistan, or the ongoing crisis in Venezuela. As the second largest economy in the world and one of the United Nations Permanent Five of Security Council, China's diplomatic role has been in the spotlight and at times under a microscope. To be frank, it is often not just pure appreciation, but also some caution, concerns, misunderstandings, and even some accusations. Chinese State Councilor Wang Yi, as China's top diplomat, knows all these challenges well. At the annual media conference, he talked gracefully and explained patiently to diffuse misconceptions with numbers, case studies, and a better look at history. He described the Belt and Road Initiative not as a debt trap or geopolitical tool, but an economic pie and relations between China and the U.S., not a zero-sum game, but inseparable relations 40 years in the making. But he was also firm in saying that China does not believe in becoming a silent lamb when the legal rights of its citizens and corporations are violated. He did say that China does not seek to be assertive or become a hegemonic power as some other countries did in history. It is quite a delicate balance, one would say, a challenging tightrope for China to walk now. In hindsight, China's diplomacy since the founding of the People's Republic of China 70 years ago was never as it is today. It's come close to the center of the global stage, borrowing Wang Yi's words. Just like what China experienced at the early stage of reform and opening up, it has never been here before. And China has to be both confident and hit a learning curve all the time, every step of this journey. But one would never be able to be um, smart enough on its own, something China understands well. State Councilor Wang Yi said uh, many times during his annual press conference that China welcomes constructive advice. But no one should expect goodwill and friendly intentions will always be welcomed at a time of dramatic changes in the world when parties rush to protect their own biggest interests, often at others' expense, China is sophisticated enough to face challenges of misperceptions and even provocations. But according to Wang Yi, China as a country in great transformation is far from cynical or indifferent. Take relations between China and the U.S. as the biggest example. State Councilor Wang Yi warned against the danger that the political motives of some could hijack the future of arguably the most important bilateral relations in the world. He also asked all to look at the relations in retrospect, 40 years of cooperation, though with frictions from time to time, underpinned with coordination, cooperation, and stability. But attempts to decouple the two economies also exist. Yet the state councillor asked who wants to decouple from opportunities, the future, and the rest of the world. China, working with many others around the world, stand for all these. It takes two to tangle. Despite the eloquence of China's top diplomat Wang Yi, how should partners map out their own roads and along the way interact with China? That is a choice all are making even now while I am talking. Particularly with the external pressures some countries already have come to feel over the past few months. We can learn from ancient Greek Aeschylus, who said happiness is a choice that requires effort at times. But the choice to be made by all is not the kind one had to make during the Cold War era. Either you are my enemy or you are a friend. It's one every country has to make about their own future. It would be a convenient choice to become indifferent to the problems of disruptions they created or to step forward 
and make rational choices for the long term to make the world more inclusive and to be set free from the Cold War mentality. The options are all open now. It is not late to work together for the better. I'm Tian Wei in Beijing. For more on China's foreign policy, we have in our Beijing studio Da Wei, Assistant President at the University of International Relations. Welcome, sir, to our program. Also joining us in our Beijing studio, Wang Yiwei, the Director of the Institute of International Affairs at Renmin University. And joining us in Washington, D.C., long time no see, Cheng Li, Director and Senior Fellow at the John Thornton China Center at the Brookings Institution. Welcome, Mr. Li. I want to start by asking you, Mr. Li, since the other two gentlemen tune in this morning, Morning to the press conference, but from your perspective, Washington, your biggest takeaway of this annual press conference given by State Councilor Foreign Minister Wang Yi. Well, the the major takeaway from my perspective is the delicate balance that the Minister Wang wants to achieve. Actually, that term also used in your opening remark. There's a number of balances. First is the balance between uh, developing country and uh, developer country. As we know that the China identifies itself as a developing country, and in many ways, China also associated with developing country in profound way, uh, especially the Afri Africa and uh, South America and mm. Middle East. And uh, this message is very clear. But at the same time, uh, China also pay great attention to the uh, developer world, especially United States and the EU. Now this comes to the second balance. You can see that uh, even the Western world have a different approach toward China, and the United States certainly are uh, 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 more critical in all front, but uh, you uh, uh, still wanted to economically engage with China. So you see that the delicate balance, especially when you emphasize President Xi Jinping's upcoming trip to Italy. Mm. So that's a very, very interesting development. The third balance is the, uh, the international pressure, especially from the West, uh, you use the term some accusations, but at the same time, China's domestic concern, uh, Chinese uh, people sometimes are also quite angry with what happened in Huawei and etc. So when you want to achieve that delicate balance, to say the least, the both sides uh, inside China and outside China, there are some anxieties. And finally, mm. it's a balance between cooperation and the competition. Certainly, Wang Yi emphasizes the cooperation. Right. Quite a number of balances illustrated by Mr. Li coming from Mr. Wang's press conference. And Mr. Da, what do you think? Is that a very hard balance to keep now for China? Yes, of course. I think China, uh, as a major power, uh, China need to, uh, you know, uh, have very good relations with developing country, but at the same time, uh, have also uh, wide cooperation with the developed country. And uh, particularly in recent years, uh, as China rise, I think the outside world, uh, particularly in the Western country, has, I, I will say the concerns, uh, anxieties has mm. already been increased. So China need to be very careful to keep this balance, uh, to defend China's own interest, but at the same time to make the outside world understand China's position very well, mm. not to be, uh, to be viewed very assertive uh, uh, or aggressive. I think these are the, uh, you know, the difficulty that the state councillor need to, you need, to, need to keep the balance. Right. He said specifically that China does not want to be assertive, but at the same time needs to protect the legal rights of its citizens and also of its corporations and entities. Take a look at the case study of Huawei. That's a beautiful illustration of that. A state councillor and Foreign Minister Wang Yi did say China wouldn't stand by like a silent lamb, but actively defend the rights of Chinese citizens and corporations against unfair treatment abroad. Take a listen. That the recent action against a particular Chinese company and individual is by no means a pure judicial case, but a deliberate political move to bring them down. We support the company and individual in question in seeking legal redress to protect their own interests and refusing to be victimized like silent lambs. Now, that's another balance, isn't it, uh, Professor Wang? I mean, on the one hand, Huawei is a private company. 
it's not part of China's government. But on the other hand, the Chinese government, foreign ministry included, and State Councillor Wang Yi included, is working toward protecting the rights of any individual and any uh, entities from China that are acting legally, uh, whether inside China or overseas, as China sees it. So, Ms. Professor Wang, that's another balance that China needs to take. I prefer to use uh, coordination, not just a balance. Mm. You know, balance is more negative. It's uh, political science with the West. Uh, Chinese wisdom is to coordinate uh, both, you know, developing country as the uh, major power. Uh, now, China lives in a very globalized world. Uh, the Chinese companies like Huawei is not just a developing country or not. This is, uh, you know, mega uh, companies in the take a leading role in the 5G. I think Huawei is very global. Mm. Uh, it's not just a Chinese company. So they have their own interests. So, of course, Chinese government should protect and uh, defend the legal rights. At the same time, other uh, countries, like UK, they also, I think, uh, it's at their own interests. Mm. So we should go beyond the traditional international relation perspective to understand of the uh, new, uh, even uncertain world. Mm. How about that? Go beyond the so-called the traditional theories of international relations as we are already in a critical juncture, Professor? Yeah, um, as a scholar, as a researcher, of course, I want to, just like Professor Wang, we also we want to contribute uh, to the international theory of international relations, to the to add the terminology into the vocabulary, yeah. right? So, but uh, this is a, uh, I will say this is a very long process. Uh, we need to be very patient. Mm. We need to work with the uh, foreigners, the Westerners, together to understand, to to uh, make the outside world understand, like uh, the distinguished. Uh, Professor Wang made between balance and uh, coordination, mm. right? Mm. Yes. So terminology is one thing, but the world is changing, and that is true. So much uh, reflected in the relations uh, nature of it, uh, uh, Mr. Li, uh, between China and the United States. And I want you to listen to this quote coming from the press conference given by State Councillor Foreign Minister Wang Yi on China's trade relation with the United States. This year marks 40th anniversary of China and the U.S. establishing diplomatic ties. And State Councillor Foreign Minister Wang Yi said this, two countries benefit from cooperation and lose when they entangled in disputes. Take a listen. Exaggerating our competition out of all proportion would squeeze our space of cooperation. The right attitude is to focus on expanding our cooperation. This is both in our mutual interest and what we owe to the world. Mm. Of course, that's beautiful theories, and yet given the current quite turbulent time, Dr. Li, between China and the United States, how should we understand State Councillor Wang's perspective? Well, actually, that's a good point, and uh, we, uh, especially outside the world, now uh, talk too much about uh, the competition and even confrontation. We forget uh, that in a fundamental way, both China and United States share a common interest, which is to prevent a war, and secondly, to, for financial economic stability, both countries benefit. Now, of course, we have some differences, differences uh, in terms of ideology, in terms of political system, in terms of uh, maybe economic development uh, model or, or uh, emphasis. Mm -hmm. uh, but in these fundamental areas, we share sometimes if we are obsessed with confrontation and, uh, uh, and the competition, we lose a big picture. So I'm glad that Wang Yi uh, raised that issue, and I hope that uh, we uh, uh, both sides should continue to through communication, through dialogue, and uh, realize that uh, in a profound way that uh, we are on the same page. Mm, Dr. Li, you use an extremely important verb, you hope. And th but the reality, I have to remind you, is not necessarily as beautiful as you hope, Dr. Li. And therefore, uh, how pragmatic shall we be about the realities, given the fact that the trade negotiations are still going on, and sometimes that feeling still came out in the press reports uh, in both countries toward one another. And you also heard uh, different stories and uh, accusations without really grounded uh, examples or numbers. But, you know, that's how people feel about each other. So trust and lack of trust, that's the issue, isn't it? Dr. Lee, it's not likely to change in the short term, probably even get worse before it get better. 
No, I think that we enter a very problematic area and uh, era, and also it's very, very dangerous. I think uh, both sides talk about a new era. And, uh, but the important thing is we should realize that uh, some of the, this more uh, driven by technological change. It's uh, quite uh, unique, and the technology change is go far ahead of uh, what government policy can do. But at the same time, that uh, 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 because of technology tension, because of economic political landscape change, mm. uh, this is something is quite uh, new for the United States and uh, how to maintain uh, U.S. leadership in a changing world. So it will not be easy. But at the same time, the uh, United States has legitimate concern in terms of economic front and also on some technological uh, norms and yeah. standards. And uh, also both sides and all countries should really uh, consider to uh, form a kind of international norm rules to deal with the changing environment and the changing technological uh, development. So I That's think that the both sides and all countries should really uh, 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 realize this uh, fundamental change in the global uh, landscape and te technological revolution. That's n uh, uncharted water for China too, isn't it, uh, Mr. Da, Professor? Yeah, yeah, I totally agree. And I think you, you use the word pragmatic. I think uh, one of the things strike me today is I think uh, State Councilor Wang uh, was very pragmatic when he talked about, when he discussed the China-U.S. relations. Mm -hmm. He not only talked about the cooperation between our two countries, he also mentioned competition. And he uh, admit that there is some competition between China and the U.S. The only, the, the, the more important thing is to control this competition. And we should not exaggerate the competition. But the competition, to some extent, is a reality. We need to control it into a, a healthy competition. I think this is a very pragmatic and a correct attitude to face the reality. I think this is the only way that we can control the competition. Mm. The first step is to admit there is competition. The second step is to control it. So I think I totally agree with you and uh, agree with Mr. Li Cheng. I think uh, in, the way, in the way ahead, we will have a lot of competition and hard time. But so long as we can recognize it uh, and we can face it very, you know, um, uh, very, very uh, with cool, high, cool, high, uh, cool minded, I think we can control the uh, competition mm. very well. But it, of course, it's, I mean, for us in the studio, it's easier said than done, isn't it? Yeah. I mean, we can talk about the pragmatism that needs to be instilled in all kinds of policies and actions. But in reality, when something is being debated, sometimes it could be getting out of control. And being blown out of proportion. That's usually when it happens, right? But Professor Wang, to you, for example, China has been advocating about the Belt and Road Initiative, and you've been doing research about that for quite some time. I mean, the Chinese uh, State Council of Foreign Minister talk about it as saying it's not a geopolitical tool, it is not a dead trap, it is an economic pie, it's a, a platform for win-win. But no matter how many times you talk about this, you use terms like this, still some are having the misperceptions about what it is. And of course, there are things that need to be improved as well. Professor? I think that's because of the U.S. and uh, in general the West, without enough self-confidence about the future, about the uh, model, about the uh, political system uh, even. So they mention about uh, competition. Uh, the competition is between China and the U.S. The thing about the competition for the world leadership. The Belt Initiative is for China to seek the hegemony, to replace the U.S. or challenge U.S. Uh, leadership. That's uh, not the case. When uh, uh, Councillor uh, Wang mentioned about the competition, it's about the competition of the uh, interests. Mm. Uh, I think that's very natural. About the Belt Initiative, why there's so many misunderstandings? First, there's no reference. The only reference is Marshall Plan, mm. and that's geopolitics. And because the Silk Road is a geopolitics concept, performed by German Hitchhofen, uh, he's a, a scholar. So the Chinese use the Belt Road Initiative, it's, it's not that way. And our culture is He and He, it's thinking more harmonious and peace cooperation. It's not just the divided the world, divided the rule. Mm -hmm. So I think that's the uh, differences. And it's, uh, it's not uh, the trap because so many countries participate, right? It's, if it's a trap, and then, why? Right, they are smart. But you and know, it's you not know. a charity, it's okay. not for, for assistance. Uh, all so of these beautiful analyses, but gentlemen, the three of you, I have to remind you, 
there's already rhetoric being formed around the world talking about China. Whenever you talk about China, there must be a hidden agenda behind China's action, behind China's theory, behind China's words. So when rhetoric like that already formed, what can you do about it before it gets worse? How can you prevent it getting worse? And Dr. Li, you got some pragmatic ways? Yes, I think you have a good, good point. <laughs> so I'm glad that you raised that issue because uh, the outside world, especially the Western countries, especially Western government, uh, have a different view from a uh, Chinese perspective. And of course, some Western companies uh, certainly want to seize the opportunity with one belt, one road. But there's a serious concern from outside world. So I'm glad that Wang Yi's uh, speech, I think the next month, the second uh, belt road uh, uh, conference China will hold, uh, will emphasize improvement, uh, particularly in the areas of openness, uh, transparency, and inclusiveness. I think that they also should emphasize the market driven uh, rather than uh, some uh, Western countries criticize China, uh, the you know, so, so called uh, state capitalism, whether mm -hmm. rightly or wrongly. But I'm also glad that uh, recently, that uh, in, the, in the MPC meeting, that uh, the, the term made in China 25. Uh, start to change. I think these are the welcome development. I hope that China also have better understanding of the outside world's perspective. Mm -hmm. I, uh, but I'm glad that the Wang Yi's press conference emphasizes these three terms. Let me repeat, openness, transparency, and inclusiveness. Mm. And by the way, uh, Professor Da, Mr. Wang Yi, the top Chinese diplomat, is the one that is most sophisticated, one could argue, about international relations together with many of his colleagues. And, but the rest of the country, you need to bring them with you, right? I mean, a top diplomat could only be able to talk to such an extent, but everything has to be done by everybody inside this country. So how can you, at a critical juncture where China is facing right now, China has never been here before, by the way. It's second largest economy. China never experienced that in the past decade since PRC was founded. So how would they bring the rest of the country update also about many of the concepts that you talk about and the blueprint that you uh, analyze for us uh, so that all the Chinese will be on the same line. That is an issue as well, Professor Da. I think this is the role that the media need to play. I, think I know you're going to say that. <laughs> <laughs> now the arrow is going to the media. Okay. I mean, your importance. Right. Yeah. <laughs> but Professor Da, please. Yeah, it's true because, you know, uh, I think the diplomats and government officials, they, they can only say this. They can only talk in that way. And, uh, well, professors like us, mm -hmm. we, can, we, can, we can talk to, we can teach our students, we can educate the students, but for the general uh, public, I think the public media is extremely important. Mm. And of course, this is not, not only the task of you. I think people like us, we, uh, we can use social media, we can mm. use those new medias to, to spread those uh, you know, uh, ideas to the, uh, to the public, to mm. the Chinese audience, and make the whole country, uh, I mean the whole people, uh, on the same page. It's very important, isn't it, Professor Wang? Yes, uh, as I uh, continue to highlight, coordination. You know, the world is so... <laughs> you just love that word. Go ahead, I, I Professor. You know, so-called the 65 countries, at the beginning we said the Belarus countries, 500, billion, uh, 500 million, they don't have the electricity. 100 million without clean water. 16 of them, not joined up to. 24 of them, they're below the average of the human uh, development index. Yes. Eight of them, they're less, less developed countries. How can I tap the high standard to those countries? Mm. So what China is doing is like uh, building the swimming pool, training them to swimming, and then they can swim in the sea, market mm. principle, high standard. So it's not a violent the principle of the high standard, the market economy, mm. but the preconditions we built that the industrial park, mm. uh, in the, uh, economic zone. So it's not a violence. It's not a so many contradictions, actually. The Western media exaggerate the, the uh, Belarus initiative, the so-called China model. This is not pure China model. Mm -hmm. China learning from the West. But let the Western model more adapt to the, ro right. the local additions, which the Belarus countries would like to share the experience. With but China. of course, transparency and openness from China is also very important. So that for reason we have the know, summit and the bilateral and the multilaterally, yes. Exactly, yes. And what is going on and what is going on in China's mind. Uh, before we go, we only have very limited time. I know this is huge topics we're discussing today, very important. Uh, but I want to go to you, Dr. Li. Let's come back to reality once again. On the ground, there's a negotiation that needs to be finished. That's likely to decide on the fate of the relations between China and the United States. You got WTO reform later in the year. 
Meanwhile, you got a lot of uh, different kinds of multilateral meetings, all likely to indicate some kinds of conflicts or opportunities for coordination, if I could borrow your word, Professor Wang. So, Dr. Li, what are we talking about now for the rest of the year? Well, actually, that, uh, let me also uh, remind us that uh, United States did send a delegation to the first uh, road and uh, build road initiative by uh, Matthew Portinger, the senior director of the White House. Now, of course, the last uh, couple of years, a lot of changes. America's in the uh, middle of the uh, search for a new strategy, new paradigm uh, towards China. That uh, will take a long time because it's not that easy. There are a lot of conflict concerns and etc. Ultimately, I think. Uh, uh, really, I agree with Wang Yi that we cannot decouple. It will be a disaster if mm. we have two uh, 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 internets and the two financial systems. I think this uh, uh, is not the way uh, we move to. So, but at the same time, uh, United States has a legitimate concern All and right. also need to uh, sometimes reflect American domestic politics, etc. So, I think the negotiation on the trade front, I, I'm actually quite optimistic. I think there's an incentive for both sides to reach agreement. But uh, the technology competition and the strategic uh, tensions will require some time. But at this point, we should have a program like yours to have a dialogue, to uh, have uh, uh, the, the uh, doors and the windows are open. Yeah. So I think that's crucial. Thank you so much. We're running out of time. But our window and doors are always open for discussions like this. Uh, uh, Dr. Chang Li in D.C., uh, Da Wei and Wang Yiwei here in Beijing. Really appreciate it, gentlemen, for being with us. Have a great weekend, every one of you. Thank you.